Yesterday's video, which I'll link up here, was about loading data such that the data was correct as it went into the database and therefore your huge inserts weren't crashed and you'd lose hours or days worth of effort. But sometimes the data is valid and yet still invalid. It might pass all the data type checks, etc. But when you look at the data as a whole, it may violate some constraints. The most common example would be, for example, you've got duplicates or it violates a check constraint. So what's an efficient way of cleaning up, for example, say those duplicates after you've loaded your data? Let's look at some examples on how to avoid it being too expensive to clean that data up. So I'll start with an example. I've got a table here called T2. It's just a copy of DBA objects, but I've added an additional column at the front. It's just the row num and it's, I'll call it PK because it's going to be eventually our primary key. So it's just gonna go from one to about 80,000, but I'm gonna add an additional one row with a row num of one as well. So now I'm definitely gonna have two rows with a value of one for the primary key. Obviously, we would not normally be privy to this information. We don't know that there's any duplicates and typically we hope for the best or we assume that data is going to be clean. So we would just charge ahead and try to create a primary key. And of course, it fails. That's a very expensive operation to have fail on you because to add a primary key, effectively, we've done a huge sorting operation to try put the data inside a sorted index. And in fact, if we throw a trace on the command, you can see that inside the trace file, the way we go ahead and add the unique constraint or the primary key constraint is behind the scenes, we're running a create unique index command. That's gonna burn a lot of temporary table space and RAM and CPU only to have it failed and be thrown away. So we need to remove the duplicates before we can try this again. There's plenty of videos and blog posts out there, uh, even my own analytics series, you can have a look there. There's a delete the duplicate rows example, but I'll do the same thing here. All I'm doing is using a simple analytic row number partitioning by my candidate primary key, which is the PK column. And I'll simply assign a row number to get any values which have duplicates. Any row number greater than one means it's a candidate row that I would want to get rid of and I'll simply wrap that in a delete statement and the job is done. My one duplicate has been removed. Of course, that delete, or more accurately, the subquery inside it, has done another huge scan and sort of the data. And finally, when that's done, now I can go ahead and rerun my add primary key command. So that would be another big, huge sort, creating an index in order to add the primary key. So three sets of work to get the job done. Let me roll that delete back so I've still got my duplicates and let's see if we can improve upon three big operations. Inside Oracle Home RDMS Admin is a script called UTL EXCPT. This creates a table called exceptions. You can edit that script and create it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, but effectively it's a placeholder for where errant row IDs will be placed when you add a constraint. So. I can now use an extended clause for adding a primary key or any constraint. I'll go ahead and try add my primary key again. This time I'll add exceptions into and then the name of my table, which I've defaulted to exceptions. The primary key still doesn't go on, but rather than having nothing to show for it, any offending rows have their row ID placed into this exceptions table. Now I can go ahead and look at those rows and decide what I wanna to do to clean them up. Now it's worth noting if I throw a trace on this, even with the exceptions clause, Oracle is being optimistic. It's assuming you're probably not going to have any invalid data. So we will go ahead and try create that index. And if that fails, then it's going to run a brand new query to go find all the offending rows. You can see it's a self join to a group by statement. When I look inside the exceptions table, both row IDs for that offending duplicate row of a primary key of one have gone in there. The database obviously doesn't know which particular row is the, uh, the one we want to get rid of. But even with that, I've now got a much faster cleanup operation because rather than having to scan the whole table, I can drive in via that exceptions table, joining back to my table called T2 to find the offending rows, throw in the familiar row number clause, and I can delete one of the particular rows. Now I can go ahead and rerun my command to add the constraint, but still we're sort of at three scans here because the exceptions clause in our first attempt was both a create index and then a big scan to find the duplicates. And then we have that final example once again to add the constraint successfully. I believe we can still go a little bit better than that. I'll drop the constraint and re-add the duplicate row so we're back at a starting position. 
But rather than just adding the constraint straight away now, I'll create the index that would normally be used to support that constraint. Now, it'll need to be a non-unique index because I've got duplicate rows in there. And non-unique indexes do consume a little bit more space than a unique index, but I don't think it's a significant overhead. Now I can create the constraint with a no validate option. Now, that's a zero cost. It's simply a dictionary change. The existence of the index before that means I can, from this point onwards, make sure that any rows coming in are not going to be duplicates. So I've sort of half achieved the job, but obviously the existing data is yet to be validated. If I was to go ahead and use an add constraint with an exceptions clause, yes, I still need to scan the data, but the presence of the index now means it's going to be more efficient because I could do an index fast full scan. I don't need to scan the entire table. But I'm going to steer clear of that because it's still obviously a reasonable amount of work. I'd like to show a different option, which might be faster. It might not be, but it might be a little bit faster depending on the cost of sorting and temporary table space in your server. The definition of a duplicate was if I was searching through these primary keys in order, then if the previous value equals this value, then obviously one of those two is a duplicate. I can phrase that in SQL using the lag function in an analytic. If I was to walk down the index in key order, then I don't need to do any sorting because I know that the entries are already sorted for me and I can use the lag function then to pick up those duplicates. You can see the explain plan here says there's no sorting. I'm just going to buffer some results in my window as I walk through the index. Armed with that, and because I'm a little bit lazy to totally rewrite the SQL, I'll simply slam that into a for loop because I'm assuming not many rows anyway, and simply whirl through those entries as they come up and do a delete statement. That cleans up my duplicates without doing a big sort. I did an index full scan. I simply walked through the index in index order. Having done that, now I can finally go ahead and do a validate on my constraint to make sure that all the existing data is also satisfying the primary key definition. Yes, I'm doing three big scans still, the first one to create the index, the second one walking through the index, and the third one to then go to the validate. However, I think it's reasonably efficient or more efficient than the other options because first of all, the second one is doing an index walk without doing any sorting. We're just walking through the index. And the final one is effectively doing an index fast full scan because the index is already present. And moreover, as I've mentioned in previous videos, that enable validate is an online operation. So I'm not blocking access to the table by other users. So there you have some options when it comes to removing duplicates in order to get constraints added to your data. It may be beneficial for you to create the index in advance rather than go through the headaches of having to rerun alter table add constraint commands every time you get an error and some duplicates.